Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Kyle. Welcome to Kyle Plays Games and welcome to Deep Lake. Now this is the prologue to, uh, I guess it's going to be a continuation of this game, but this is a, uh, I believe a Choices Matter type of game and I'm not going to have it set for like and reset uh, if I make a mistake or anything. We're just going to do a one playthrough and see what, uh, see what happens. But anyway, this game is available free to play on Steam. Link is in the description down below if you're interested in playing it for yourself. And uh, like and subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know what you think about the video in the comments down below. And uh, let's go ahead and get started here. And uh, by the way, there is like some uh, like uh, indie music along with this, but uh, I had to turn that off because I just didn't want to take a risk of any kind of copyright strike. But uh, besides that, let's go ahead and uh, click on start and uh, let's see what kind of trouble I can get into. By the way, if I don't get the oh, uh, the road ran through the dense forest. Um, okay, what what do I do here? Okay, I don't know what this button does. Uh, I slowed down, looked around, lowered the car window, smelled the forest, and burst in the car. Uh, flow was humid and tilling. Okay, I missed that one. All right, uh, I coughed, getting a breath of cold forest air. Last week I got a fever and lied around uh, in, in bed for a week. It's bed! Lied around in bed for a week. Uh, that, not, that, it's called nauseous. That nauseous feeling of sickness still didn't uh, leave me alone. I have a feeling there's going to be a whole lot more spelling errors in this. So let's bear with me on this. Uh, it is already April, but winter is not rushing to leave. Well, I know that feeling. Uh, between the trees, dirty little islands of snow were, were thinning out. Bare, damp earth was slowly getting rid of its white disease. I wish I could stay the same. Stay the same. This illness, still sitting inside me, was not letting me to breathe freely. That's another error on there. Okay, that's gonna really throw me off with all these little gram Yeah, if I had an editor, I would edit that out. But uh, yeah, these uh, grammatical errors are really uh, uh, gonna throw me off. Uh, it was an hour and a half ride to Grand Grandpolis. Grandpolis? I'm gonna say Grandpolis. But I really didn't want to return to the city. My appointment with Trigger is tomorrow after lunch. There was no reason to rush. I tried to make the pleasure of traveling last longer and slow down. Rain started knocking on the car's roof again for a hundredth time today. It was getting dark. Water drop spray from my, water drop spray was burning my face. I raised the window and turned on the wipers. I put my foot down, accelerating. A great bird hit the windshield. Oh! Wipers threw it on, on the hood, smearing and mixing thick blood with the rain on the glass. Oh! I accelerated more and more until a, dust of, a gust of wind took down the body on the road. Probably this is uh, when it all started. Let me tell you about myself, or a lot will be misunderstood. My name is Salber Unit, or just call, or just Sally. I'm gonna go with Sally. Yeah, they really didn't like your name. For ten years, I was working as a forensic ph a photographer. Why not a wedding one? That is a key question. I studied for a medical examiner, but decided to cheat on it, on this job. I wanted to take pictures of corpses, not picking their insides. Respectable, okay. I didn't care about flowers, landscapes, happiness on people's faces. I am a death photographer. I can't pronounce that word. I only care about how things uh, decompose. The beauty of a uh, can't I say it? The beauty of deco decompo decomposing body hypnotizes me. That's not... Th there's no way that that is actually correct. 
it can it contains some attractive force it's the beauty of uh, a body decomposing that's what it is it's not the uh, it's not like now actually the word beauty isn't exactly correct it is something nobler death is the force and life is its follow up it's source death is the source okay that one's that one's on me Oh boy, you can look at it from another perspective. Coat turned inside out, warms the same way. Death is a structure, composition. It is ideal, and, and in life is an incomplete act. Universe started from death. My friends consider me a strange, asocial man. That is the truth. I don't like people. People are just barrels of flesh and bones, full of lies. Well, that's putting it deep. Benefit, lust, envy. That is all that drives them. It's not like a, a it's not like a goner. A dead body drops out the human's masks, doesn't pretend. It is neither a man nor a woman. Well it is in is is united with eternity. What? Okay, that's really thinking deep. However, there was one passion that connects me with the living obsession of horses. I can infinitely look at two things. Marble corpse structure and a graceful canter of a stallion that rushes to the horizon. What? 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 This detrimental interest in these four-legged animals uh, predetermined my destiny. Really? About a year ago, I went to... Ah, uh, uh, I don't even know. Dyston Mellows? I don't know. I don't know how it's it. To take pictures of grazing herds. This is going to be a hard one here. This is going to be a hard one. I mean, I'm pretty decent at, at reading, but wow. Photographing horses and stallions. I got carried away and went deep into the pack. My guy screamed. My guy screamed something, and the convoy of horses rushed away. In the midst of dust, I fell down to the ground, almost like I got hit by a hammer. Darkness smothered me. Parts of reality and illusions chaotically blended into incoherent fragments. That's pretty cool. My dead parents. Well, that's not cool. Operating room. Unpleasant gaze from another from under the medical mask. Noises, whispers, melodies, and old man. I breathe with the help uh, of ventilator. Sometimes seeing hallucinations. An old left ha was to the left of me. What? Oh man, oh man. Why do I even care? Some weird, unfamiliar feelings, sense, movement, sounds, vibrations surrounding that man, surrounded that man. I was a, uh, I was greedily absorbing the entire of elements. What? And then darkness. Light, blinding light at the end. Whatever I was, whatever I was, it rushed towards the light. A shaggy white head and a bent back of an old man appeared. He led the way. It's led the way, not leaded the way. While I follow him in this boundless universe. And then in enormous space, I felt its volume. I was inside a cell. I felt its size, and I knew that billions of those invisible cells surrounded me. Suddenly, a dark essence with a cloak of ash appeared in front. Old man stopped. Me too. The cloak wasn't made of fabric, but from the burnt ash. 
face was covered with a baggy hood. Under the hood, terrifying black abyss. Old man made three steps forward, standing next to the essence, and turned back to me. He leaned on his, his staff, a bag over his left shoulder, his face dissolving in the smoke. Only his messy hair was visible. The dark essence reached out to me with a loud, creaking voice. You are early! I wasn't sure what to respond with and if I was able to speak. You are now, in you are now instead of this old man? My voice finally cut. Probably not. I just followed the light. Do you understand the dead? I feel them. Feeling them is not a mastery. Essence turned to the old man. Give him con 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 Alright. Man came up to me, gave me the staff, took off the bag, and put it over my left shoulder. What now? They will find. They will find you. They will find you. The translation of the sort. I, I noticed at the beginning of this that it told me either it was going to be Russian or English uh, texting. I'm assuming that since I clicked on English, that it did a rough translate of everything. Everything disappeared. I was falling down. I woke up in the hospital. Old man's bed was empty cold draft filled the room. It entered through a huge broken window, playing around with the terrible smell of medicine. Well, you broke through the window! The sharp feather of the glass cut howling, whistling wind. Nurses and a doctor came in. Confusion, noises, guesses about what happened were not ending. Old man left through the window. You could hear the voices of the medical staff. How did he jump out? Wasn't he in a coma? There was no man, no body. I was rapidly getting better. Springs of health woke up inside me. My brain formed new thoughts, completely different from what they were before. Perception, imagination, logic, all built up into a strange, irrational flow. One night, something pushed me, like a zombie. I stood up and went to a neighboring room. They recently placed a young firefighter there, who was stuck between burning beams. He was dead. Everyone was sleeping, so his death was unnoticed. Cold sweat shivers all over my body. Whoa! Being there with the leaving firefighter's soul created spontaneous images of swirling layers of uh, plasm? All kinds of colored dashes, sticks, geometric figures assem assembled into some unknown symbols. Until morning, I observed weird fiery patterns. Now if someone died, I would always go to the dead and drop into trance. I watched symbolic codes that fly through the s around the soul trying to understand its, their meaning. After fully recovering, I returned home. I was starting to make sense of those chaotic series of unending uh, ideograms. Ideograms? Yeah. Signs were falling into a certain systemic groups. Systematic groups, I'm sorry. Later on, symbols constructed a, a somatic flow. Something like a hybrid elephant. Alphabet. Elephant, yes. Elephant, yes. <laughs> Alphabet. There was no interest in forensic job anymore. I left. I received my severance pay and started roaming places where someone died. I read the information from the corpse drawing tables, deciphering death signs and codes, writing them down in a big notebook. Trigger appeared 40 days after the old man incident. I was drinking coffee in a bar nearby and was writing down an idea that I got on a piece of napkin. 
A strong fear pierced my body. The feeling of um, upcoming danger came down to the bottom of my stomach. Trigger sat next to me. They found me. Trigger had a sca scare stare of an unwinking abyss. Who was ready to devour me to, to devour me together with all of my past and future reincarnations. Wade just took his order like there was nothing wrong. I felt like I was the only one who could see his black hole face. It's time. Well, that woke me up. Time to be useful. Well, I am in trouble. Do you know anything about purpose? A mission? Inside your mother's womb, you receive your purpose. Why are you born? Why did you need it to achieve? What did you need to achieve? To create. What to lose? What to win? What to destroy? The waitress brought him coffee. Sips of the brown liquid disappeared in the mist of his missing mouth. Someone died. You were by my by my side. Did something stay after death? Signs flying around the body. How many? It depends. Five to nine. It depends. Five to nine. Five elements of different elements. He was right. I don't know how I didn't notice that. I didn't either. Thin pieces are, are leaving the corpse. What you get is an information about the complete or incomplete purpose. Five symbols about one's entire existence. In the end, was one life worth or not? I got shivers running all over my skin. 21st of every month, we meet here. Trigger gave me a little black as coal rectangular disc. The first list of people, the exact date of their death. Read the codes during the first three days after death. Later, it is hard to retrieve the data. For now, start with Grant, from Grandpolis. I keep on wanting to say Grandopolis. They might start calling it that. We were brought in it after our second meeting. I grabbed the disc, examine it, examining how it works. Scroll to the right, text appears. To the left, it disappears. And here is a little gift. You love horses? Trigger takes the disc, turns it to the other side. Extra section, winners of every race in the entire country for the next two weeks. What? So a cheat seat? That's enough for your basic needs. Complete a job, I update the info. Recruitment complete. Digest it. It's bitter cold. Like apparently like all these souls in this game. Trigger went to the exit. His unfinished cup of coffee stayed on the table. If I could have poured it down his gullet, I wouldn't have burned it all. Ah, I've crossed the Rubicon. I took my, uh, my mystical responsibilities in full seriousness. The first list contained 11 people. They were dying pretty uniformly during this month. The hardest part was to get a long time access to the body. Reading the code takes some time. I was very creative about it. Found the most extraordinary solutions. Learned what these people did for a living their family, and relatives. I hit the road for a year, visited different places of my country where my corpses were located. In my free time, I went to the horse races and betting, ho and betting houses. Practiced horseback riding myself if I had a chance. I've had been meeting at Trigger once a month in a bar. I gave him the codes to my clients. By Trigger's rules, I had to write them on top of chicken eggs. I think it's nonsense. Something about world's creation, myths, legends, and so on. Yeah, that's pretty well nonsense. I adapted cells for the eggs, like bio containers. What? Five symbols for a single person in one row. 
That way the box contained two personalities that had lived their life. The list of clients who were entering the world of the dead only consisted of unordinary people. Famous writers, artists, scientists, politicians. Even if a person wasn't well known, he fell under the criteria of an yet unknown genius. It's just that his invention or piece of art are not recognized by the contemporaries. So let's come back to the beginning of my story. It was very dark. Car lights lit the road and fluorescent road signs. Car was scared. Tires squealed. In the middle of the road, like a frog, there sat a woman in a man's shirt soaking wet. I jumped out of the car. There was almost no rain al already. Left boot sank in a in a puddle. Puddle? I hopped over it uh, to wet my wet my right foot too. I reached the woman. I almost hit you. Are you alright? She didn't even look up. Just nodded. Why are you here? What happened? She slowly stood up. Her long wet hair completely covered her face. Do you want to go to the hospital? She shook her head. Where do you live? I'll drop you off. She nodded again and headed to the car. She stretched her hand and pointed to the signpost. Museum, uh, Manor, Reserve, Deep Lake. Water slipped to the left shoe, in my, in my left shoe. The woman was unusual in every way. I opened the back door for her. She walked gracefully, almost like flying. Her hair didn't let me see her face. Wet shirt was very tight around her. Okay, all right, we're going to skip that. Uh, she looked like an ivory sculpture made by an artist who dreamed of a goddess. I was captivated, looking at her, at her walk. The best word to explain it would be ethereal. I'm probably saying that wrong. She sat in the back seat. There was no visible... Getting back in the car, I hit the roof up with my head and stepped it in a paddle with both, with both my legs. It's a puddle. It's a puddle. It took me three times to start the engine. I was clearly nervous. I turned the car around to the estate's direction, slowly losing the shock from the accident that almost happened. The entire picture was building up my head. Clearly, there was something wrong with the girl. There was no energy, vibration, sense. She was basically was not death or alive. Some undefined emptiness sat behind my back. Invisible force brought my entire attention into the abyss. Stop! Jump out of the car and run away as far as I, as I can until this hypnotic connection with the black-haired stranger breaks. The only correct action I need to do is now, now, 900 meters, 900 meters to the manor. I found myself falling down in, in some hole between the present and future. Space and time were discharging, changing their poles. There was no, no flow of seconds. The matter of different mediums felt as a single one. It's hard to admit, but I wish those 900 meters turned into 900 kilometers. I stretched the moment, making the time to stop. Damn the world. I only want one thing to stay the same. My car's cabin. Eden Garden with only two of us, she and I. I don't care if she was from hell or heaven, from the underworld or the skies. From another dimension or was created by an enthusiastic poet. I don't care if she sinks her teeth in my throat, drinking blood, or tears me in pieces. I don't need anything from her. She is sitting behind my back, and I want this to last forever. In the meantime, we reach Cast Iron's Manor's gates. I press call on the intercom. The buzzer was loudly beeping, breaking the forest silence. 
Finally, a woman responded. Museum opens tomorrow at 11. Wait, wait, there was a girl. She asked to bring her here. There was a pause. Drive through to the main palace of stairs. Alloy gates slowly opened. I drove to the central building of the pack. Walking down the stairs, there was an elegant dame who you, who you should not talk uh, with about her age. Behind her, there was an athletic strong man with, in white cap and a sailor's. I went out of the car and headed towards the host. Good night. The dame introduced herself. Good night. I am Lady M, museum's warden. Lady M raised her hand toward the sailor. This is my assistant. You, uh, you won't remember his Greek name anyway. You won't remember his Greek name anyway, so we'll call him Boatman. Not Steve. All right. Sailor didn't react to his introduction. He examined me with his severe, unfriendly eyes. Sally, nice to meet you. Where is this woman? I returned to the car. Barely noticed her, she jumped right under the wheels. I opened the back door. She was not there. There was a little bit of water, exactly where my stranger was seated. She couldn't leave. Unbelievable. Lady M questioningly looked at my pale, scared face. What? Something, um, mystical. She was always here. Boatman came up to the door and bent over the seat. He took a little piece of river weed from the, the little puddle. He showed it to the lady and then went towards the household wing, which is behind the main building. She smiled. Sally, was, was there a woman or you made it up to break into the private territory? <laughs> Nonsense, I swear, there was a woman soaking wet, wearing white man's shirt. My phrase removed uh, the smile from the lady's face. It was serious. She knows something about the stranger. The girl pointed at your estate. You let me in with no questions. So you expected someone? Dear, dear Sally, just Sally. Let's keep it like that. Uh, Sally, apart from the museum, there is a choreographic school. It works on the weekend. I am its director. Girls usually arrive on Saturday morning, but some earlier on Friday. Today is Friday. When you mentioned a girl, I thought you were talking about one of my students. She smiled. Nothing surprising. No more suspicions? I am sorry. I can't believe it. It couldn't be a dream. Maybe. But she was examining me. She was clearly unsure, thoroughly thinking everything over. You can stay here overnight. If you stay, I will tell you a suggestion about disappearance of your companion. Sure. If it was not a problem, not at all. Place the car in the parking. I parked in between an old minivan and black limousine. I took a rag from the trunk to remove the, the only remainder about my strange passenger puddled in the back seat. Clearing up, I noticed a weak blue shining coming from the liquid. Defocusing, like during my usual uh, session with the dead, I looked at refraction of light and distinguished two signs. I grabbed a pen from the glove box and drew them on my left palm to remember them. The signing stopped. I dried out the seat and headed to the main entrance where Lady was waiting for me. Okay, is there a way I can like pause this? What is this? Um, let's see here. I don't know what this is. Whoop. That is not what I want. Uh, quick save complete. Okay, we are going to um, exit. Um, yes, and actually no, hit no, hit back. Nope, 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 nope. Main menu, that's what I wanted. Okay, 
So uh, I have reached my time limit. Uh, I usually try to keep these videos uh, somewhat short. Um, a lot of text-based uh, stuff. Um, there was a little bit of story adding on to there. Um, the, uh, it was just the fact of, I believe it's a translation, um, is uh, losing me a little bit. But anyway, this has been Deep Lake. Uh, I may pick this up in a future video to keep up with the story. I am kind of intrigued to see where this thing goes, but this is kind of more of like a gothic type of story uh, that really does focus on uh, death a lot. So um, it might be a little too dark for me uh, for this channel, but uh, you know, who knows? If you guys are interested in uh, me playing more of it, let me know in the comments down below and I can continue playing it. Um, but uh, I may move on, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll keep it just in case. Anyway, uh, let me know what you thought about in the comments down below, and uh, like and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, help support the channel out, and uh, I try to make up content uh, every day as possible. Um, let's see here, did I cover everything? Did I cover everything? Yeah? Okay. Anyway, my name is Kyle. This has been Kyle Plays Games. Oh, and if you would like to play this game for yourself, it is available free to play on Steam. See, I knew I was missing something. Oh well. Anyway. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.